CWP was founded officially here in Newfoundland nine years ago and uh, there were all kinds of debates going on at the time and uh, we came up with the constitution and it was actually signed here in Newfoundland. So it's great to be back here nine years later. You know, it's almost like coming full circle. Women were always present at the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, but there was no platform, if you will. There wasn't a vehicle. And you'll appreciate that it was mostly a male-dominated entity. So the notion that a platform was timely had been percolating for well over 10 or 15 years. We're finding that there isn't the kind of growth that we want to see in terms of women getting elected or even wanting to run. And the idea behind all of it is to try to encourage more women and hopefully inspire more women to want to become a politician and do the kind of things that we do. And I'm very happy to be here, and I'm very, very happy to be back in this position. I enjoy working with the women of Newfoundland and Labrador and doing the work that we're doing here in this group especially. My involvement with this goes back some 30 years in Grand Falls, Windsor, uh, where I had not been a member of the status at that time, but I had been invited to help organize Take Back the Night. I remember thinking, yeah, we should do this, and you know, I have a young daughter, I really need to get involved, I really need to do this. And it'll probably only be just for a little bit of time. Because surely, after we start to bring awareness here, that's all we're going to need to do. We're going to be able to make that difference. Thankfully, we're persistent and insistent that we're going to make those differences. And we won't go away. We will stay. We will continue this fight. We will take back the night at some point, I have no doubt. Proclamation is signed. Well, as soon as I was elected, uh, the position of being the representative to CWP came open and it was a natural fit for me to uh, step into the role. It's important to understand, to become a, a member of CWP, it's a three-year term. And it's something that you don't take lightly. And I can't wait to go home and share with my fellow ladies in Queen's Park all the amazing things that we've learned here. It was something that has always interested me. I'm, I love to travel. Um, I like to know what uh, other jurisdictions are doing to make life better for their citizens. Les femmes n'occupent pas les lieux de pouvoir. Soyez présentes dans les conseils d'administration. C'est important que les femmes s'impliquent pour prendre le pouvoir. I think it's tougher for a person who's not prepared to have their life scrutinized. If you're not prepared to have people uh, look at you and look at your past life, and if you're not comfortable with that, then that uh, it's not a role for anyone. Well, I think you know it, it concerns them, scares them. It's something that is not it's not a job that uh, you can prepare for. You can't go to school for it, or you I guess you can, but not not in the traditional sense. We are definitely in the minority, and you have all of those struggles that go on with it. But when you get there, and you get there the same way everybody else does, uh, you really have to just get in there and just do what you can. In um, CWP, our goals are to uh, largely try to find more ways to inspire women to want to get into politics. And I think uh, by going out in our outreach programs, we hope that people will see that we're really not much different than them. Uh, we've had wonderful conversations all across Canada, and our conversations are basically conversations that talk to other women and we really, once people find out we're not much different, we just have a unique job, but we're not very different from any other woman in Canada. Uh, good day, 
everybody, and uh, welcome to the Marine Institute. My name is Catherine Dutton. I am the head of the School of Maritime Studies at the Marine Institute. I actually taught a subject called thermodynamics, which a lot of people just glaze over when I say that. But uh, basically, I taught that to the marine engineers for over 10 years. Uh, and so you can imagine that most of my work career has been in a male-dominated sector. Working with all guys, it's just, I don't know how to explain it. Like, if you are the only girl in the room, you kind of feel like you're not good enough as they are. Like, they know more than you. I knew what I didn't want to do at a high school, <laughs> but I had no idea what I actually wanted to do. <laughs> um, I grew up pretty much chasing my grandfather around. He was a fisherman all his life, so I used to be out in boat with him in the summertime, every summer, as much as I could. I wanted to do something different, so I figured, hey, this looks interesting, why not go give it a shot? How do I encourage young women? I want young women to take the leap. And certainly for lots of them, it's a leap. But the notion that they know there are other women across the land who are not standing in front of them, not standing behind them, but standing beside them, it's hugely important to me. Women need to learn to stand together. Well, I want them to be fearless. I want them to realize that their voice matters. Make a choice, pick it the, the right one, and then uh, venture on. I have a good story of a, a woman that um, she started shadowing me when she was in grade 10, so she would have been 16. She's now a lawyer in Winnipeg at one of the top firms. Uh, and uh, recently I saw on Facebook that she was supporting uh, a woman candidate. This woman, you know, obviously sees the significance, the importance of, of having strong women run. I mean, how often do you have women run in municipal politics in Newfoundland anyway? But to have three run in a by-election was phenomenal, and the voter turnout was phenomenal. So I think hopefully we've changed things up a bit to, to seem more open, the men and the women. I'm an old girl guide. I, just the whole notion of service. Yeah, of service. I mean, we live in a great town, and I'm at a point now in my life too where I have the time and the inclination and the energy. What are we doing? with young people to help them understand their role as, uh, as global citizens. Uh, that, you know, the world is bigger than me. It also speaks to the volunteering. It speaks to a sense of community, <clears throat> excuse me, for running for, even if it's council at school and then moving through the process. If you don't have your family and extended family 120% behind everything you do, it's going to be a tough journey. You do have to do a lot of juggling uh, and you just find a way to do it. You, um, you don't have a choice. Being away from the family is probably the, the hardest part, but I did make the efforts to, to, to get home when the hockey game was on or the, the volleyball tournament was on and, and just uh, not let them know the struggles in trying to get, make that work. But the reality is they have hockey games and shot put and discus practice. They have dance, they have music, they have lives that parallel and frankly are probably busier than mine some days. And how we manage that as a family is all about connectedness. C'est pas facile uh, jongler entre la famille et la politique. Uh, C'est très difficile de, de faire en sorte de joindre les deux, uh, les, les deux objectifs. Moi, je constate que je l'ai réussi. Je suis rendue une grand-maman avec deux grands-enfants. All women organizations in Newfoundland and Labrador need to proudly, loudly yell that you're supporting women in a nonpartisan way to enter public life. You know, as women, um, being um, being a partisan doesn't help because you have to think for yourself, what does this party do, what does that party do, and decide for yourself how, what the party is good at. Who is controlling what goes out to the public? The media is controlling that. And we have all of these incredible uh, female media people. So we had a panel, and it was the first time that I think in my time I ever heard the voice of these particular women speaking to their own challenges. That what we need to do is to begin to come together across parties to sit down and talk about how is it that we can maintain, we can encourage more women to be political, 
but we can have the conversations without the concern of, you know, you're going to be labeled or you're going to suffer because of your partisan politics. Do I really want to be a part of a certain party? Do I agree with the system? Do I agree with, you know, what's going on with Indigenous people? Do I agree with how people are being treated? Not a lot. So how am I going to take my beliefs and my ideologies and fit it into something? Um, myself, I'm studying politics because I definitely want to be a politician someday. I had the opportunity of being a provincial representative, uh, Miss Teen Newfoundland and Labrador. So that kind of gave me, you know, a bit of insight of what it is like to be a politician because I did the same things um, such as going to a lot of events and talking with people, networking, and it was nice to see, you know, what are some of the challenges going on and, you know, what really does need to be focused on. So potentially I will be a politician someday. I'm inspired, I think, to do my job and to do the best I can because I am so amazed by the people I represent and some of the challenges that come before us. I'm inspired to know that I can make a difference by people that are having daily struggles and they don't have anywhere to turn. It's very powerful. What inspires me as a politician is the ability to not necessarily know the answer to every question, but the ability to pick up the phone and mobilize the resources to respond to the questions that I impose on behalf of my constituents. Well, my mom inspired me. My mom was one of those people. Uh, she was a hardworking farm woman who just encouraged myself and my sisters to, to just be fearless, to go ahead and choose whatever you want to do, do it well, do not quit. Quitting wasn't an option in, in our family, and because of that, I think I've modeled myself after that. Uh, I've also had the opportunity to raise my son with the same idea in that uh, you go forward and whatever you set your mind to do, you do it well and you do it to the best of your ability.